church-on-the-rock-baptist.com but let us know that this outreach ministry is a blessing to your life every now and then type amen praise the lord thank you jesus hallelujah preach sing but let us know you're out there enjoying these services finally don't you worry don't you fret, he's still God, and he's never failed us yet, and we will be all right someday. Oh, I'll be all right, yes I will, I'll be all right, I'll be all right, be all right. Let's put our hands together and bless the Lord, for he's worthy to be praised. Silent night, holy night.
it is our faith that unlocks the door. And if you have the faith, the Bible says God has the power. And wherever you are all over the world, whatever time it is that you're viewing us, we want you to know that we are praying for you. My brothers and my sisters, God hears and answers prayer. And prayer is just talking with God. Whatever you have a need of today, I want to join with you in prayer. We here in the sanctuary want to join with you and ask God to help you, to bless you, to heal you, to strengthen you. But it's according to to your faith. Remove all doubt from your mind and let God bless your life. We are praying for you today. Sister Mary Ann Roberts, Naomi Smith, Norma Jean Roberts in Oakland, Minister Mosey Hill and family, Renee Tyler, Brother Gary Altman. Sister Fleeta Mae Bixby in East Palo Alto. Willie Ed and Mary Helen Malone in Fort Worth, Texas. Robin Brown Young. Kelly Sue Collins in Columbus, Ohio. Brother Kelton Waller. Harvey and Denise McGee Hoskins in Chicago. Anne, Lynn, Sharon, Ashley, Maurice and Rodney McGee and family, Janetta, Reginald, Whitney and Micah Moore, Sister Johnny Kathy in Atlanta, Georgia, Linda, Lanisha and Lonnie Gilmore. Good morning, family. We are praying for you. Jerome Kathy. James and Deborah Garner and family. Candace Romero. Sister Jean Phillips and family in Jackson, Mississippi. Sister Mary L. Rice in South Haven, Mississippi. We are praying for all of those that have suffered loss there in Kentucky, Tennessee, and Mississippi. We are praying for Brother Bob Slater. Sister Victoria Baines and family in Las Vegas, Nevada. Good morning, Sister Baines. Thank you for the beautiful Christmas card and oh, how we miss you here in San Jose. Ronald and Karen Jones and family in McDonough, Georgia. Good morning, family. God bless you today. San Denise Jones. They are also in Jonesboro, Georgia. We are praying for you. Mrs. Leola Nash and family, Janetta Elliott, Roy and Sandra Johnson, Melissa Lawson, Marilyn Mariah Manuel, Thelma McGee Carver and family in Milwaukee, Lakeisha and Thea Bradley and family in Dallas. Priscilla White in Hayward, Angela Venable and family in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Angela, I got your message, and Church on the Rock is praying for you. Good to see Sister Robin Calhoun in the audience today. Charles Calhoun, Star Crawford, Mary Jane, and Pierre Larry, Jasmine Smith in Chicago. May Johnson in Houston, Pastor Larry Ellis, Pastor Henry L. Davis Jr., Pastor Charles Noble in Newark, Ohio, Weta Davis in Detroit, Kirk and Jackie Ford Jackson, Marla Starrett, Don Rulis, Walter, Louise, Lynette, and Raquel Crawley and families there 
in Chicago, Helen Jones in Hayward, Hope Richard in East Palo Alto. We're praying for Sandra McNeil, Stephanie Gaines in San Francisco, Diane Miles in New Orleans, Sadie Tinsley, Carrie Kramer, Sister Brenda Ireland and family there in Milwaukee, Pastor Donald L. Parson, Ariel Crawford, Deacon Wilbur Butler, Catrice Joseph and Warner Robbins, Georgia, Jacqueline Thomas Dorsett in Los Banos, Robert and Lida Altman in San Francisco, Rhonda Eller, Jacqueline Marshall, Charles McNeil, Tom and Donna Arnold, Amia Evans there in Houston, Vicki Robinson and family in Sacramento. We are praying for Minister Lewis Gordon here in San Jose, Eric Jones in New Orleans, Destiny Jones, uh, Melody McDonald, all of those who are fighting COVID-19, all of those who have lost their jobs, and all frontline essential workers this morning, we want you to know we are praying for you. Now, if you're hurting this morning, I want you to lay your hand where you're hurting. And together, let's ask God to take the pain away. And if you're dealing with something that only you and God knows about, I want you to fix your mind on it now. And let's believe God to hear and answer our prayers. For what the Lord cannot do, it cannot be done. Let's have a little talk with Jesus. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we come before your presence in the only way that we know how. Bowed heads and humble hearts, thankful and grateful, for another opportunity to gather together with the saints. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Thank you for the blessings that we didn't even ask you for, but that you gave to us anyway. Thank you for a bed to sleep in last night, a shower to get into this morning. Thank you that while we slept and slumbered, you did not allow thieves to break in nor fire to break out. Uh, all night long, uh, you allowed your angel to sit at the foot of our bed, uh, protecting us uh, from dangers uh, unseen. Uh, and then early this morning, you touched us with a finger of your love, uh, allowing us to open our eyes and see a brand new day one that we've never seen before, nor will we ever see again. Thank you, Lord. You've been a good God. Thank you, Lord. You've been a faithful God. You've been a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. And Lord, we just want to say much obliged. We want to say thank you because we did not earn our blessings. Uh, we don't deserve uh, our blessings, uh, but it's only by uh, your mercy uh, and your grace. Uh, our Father, we confess uh, we have sinned against you uh, in thought, word, uh, and deed. Uh, and our Father, uh, we are sorry uh, for our sins. Uh, we plead the blood of Jesus uh, over our transgressions right now. Uh, and we ask you, God, uh, to please. Uh, wipe the slate clean uh, you got the power 
power to forgive us. And Father, you said if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Oh, our master, you said pray ye one for another. Our prayer list is long. We know you know all about it, but in obedience to your word, you said ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Our Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Kentucky, in Tennessee, all in all that area that was affected by the tornado. Lord, your hand is holy. You sit high and you look low and you know all about it. We pray for peace in those people's lives and that you would help them put the broken pieces of their lives back together. Master, someone is sick this morning and the doctor's medicine is not doing them any good. But God, you made the body. You know all about it. We pray in Jesus' name for somebody that has their hand where they're hurting and they need you to touch in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we know you got the power for you healed our body one day. You got the power to heal the sick. You got the power to help us get on track. Lord, we pray for every person watching this live today or wherever and whenever they may tune in. Comfort them, strengthen them, enlighten them, encourage them, embolden them, and save them in the name of Jesus. Lord, look in the sanctuary now. Somebody needs help. Somebody needs encouragement. Somebody needs a miracle. And you're still a miracle working God. Oh God, thank you for what you've already done. And thank you for what you're about to do. Now my Father, let your word go forth. Encourage us today. Strengthen us today. Help us to put all of our trust in you. For Lord, you don't let us down. You don't disappoint. You're there for us to lean and depend on. Now our Father, give us a word from heaven above. We need a word to take through the week. We need a word to encourage us. We need some good news in a world full of bad news. And we'll be careful to bless your name all the days of our lives. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen. Come on and put your hands together and let's bless the name of the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child, Jesus, Jesus, so holy, meek and mild, new life, new hope for all he brings, listen to the angels sing, glory, glory, glory to Born king, he was heralded by the angel. Born in a lowly manger, the Virgin Mary was chosen as his mother, and Joseph as his earthly father. Three wise men that came from afar, they were guided by the shining star. King Jesus, where he lived in a manger filled with it. his name is Jesus. Jesus. Oh, 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 what a wonderful child, Jesus, Jesus, so holy, meek, 
Sacrificing, uh, we have been praying, uh, we've been trusting and believing God. Uh, and today, uh, one who you know normally sings for us uh, is going to come and speak uh, on our theme uh, for the last six months uh, that there may be meat uh, in my house. Uh, let's give a warm, warm applause uh, for Sister Clara Jones Smith. Come on, church, uh, let's say amen. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 and it says bring me all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith saith the Lord of hosts if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Our theme today opens at a time when the people of Israel had gone away from the ordinances of God and were dishonoring him by withholding the righteous tithes and offerings of their valuable goods and resources. And they were bringing substandard offerings. Their sinfulness caused them to doubt and question God's ordinances and they're very similar to today. It seemed as though those that were disobedient were prospering. Their disobedience became a disruption to the sacred service. All right. Through the prophet Malachi, God sent a message of judgment and a call for reverence and obedience. He makes a declaration saying, return unto me and I will return unto you. Yeah. Verse eight, he tells them of the source of their return. He asks the question, will a man rob God followed by making a statement, yet you have robbed me. The house. During the days of Malachi, tithes and offerings brought consisted of the increase of their crops, animals, oils, and offered other valuables that were kept in chambers or storehouses that were especially set aside for that purpose. It was intended to provide food and resources for the priest caretakers so that they could remain there to attend to the business of the church. So giving has always been in God's plan for the support of the church. It has always been his plan for his house to be equipped, resourced, not only with material, but spiritual need for the ministry of, the furthering of the gospel message, and the teaching and perfecting of the people. In this present day, Though our offerings, our giving resources may differ, as our tithes and offerings are majorly financial, the call for reverence, obedience, and honor to God has not and will not change. The provider, and prove me now herewith, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive you. Test me and try me. We must make note right here that God is the providing source before and after. He makes it possible for us to bring, bring it and give it, and then he blesses us on the other side of our bringing and our giving. Yes. I am the Lord, I change not, he said. I am the one who sends the rains, water the crops. Yes. 
I am the one who gives the sunlight to nourish the crops. I change not. For us today, I am the one who breathed the breath of life into you with, without which you could do nothing. I am the one who allows the activity of your limbs that you can work on a job every day. I am the Lord. I change not. The promise, verse 11 and 12, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. The devourer, all the things that decrease, deplete, and destroy us, including the enemy himself. And all nations shall call you blessed. Through our obedience, we are blessed with both provision and protection. I conclude today that we really cannot afford to be disobedient to God in the area of giving. Finally, while we are very much aware of the natural laws that govern the universe, the laws of gravity, electri electricity, aerodynamics, though we may not fully understand them and they may leave room for error, there is a divine spiritual law, that law of giving that was given by God himself, Luke 6, 6 38, 2 Corinthians 9 and 6. And that law is tested and remains faithful till today. If we follow God's law, there will always be a superabundance in God's house and in our house. God bless you. Amen. Come on, church, let's bless the Lord. Thank you. Amen. I think that was very appropriate for today. Amen. I was trying to get a little something together um, for today, uh, but I can't seem to do it. So y'all just have to bear with me. Amen. I know Clara can sing and speak, but I thought maybe I'd give her a break today. And uh, the soloist that we had asked to sing is M.I.A. So sometimes you just have to make ends meet. Amen. And uh, I wanted to have our musician prepared, but um, I just wasn't able. So we just have to do what we have to do. Yeah. Will y'all help me today? Amen. Amen. And those of you out in the audience, um, bear with me as we attempt to do this. All right. All right. The first Noel, the angels did say, was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay. Oh. 
when we judge things only by what we see. What we need is the kind of faith David had, who said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. The valley of the shadow of death is a symbolic description of the state of the world. We walk through this symbolic valley of sin's darkness and death as part of our human experience. Sin's shadow is all around us. There is no place that we can go to escape it. The shadows that come into our lives reflect sin's presence in the world. But for David, a shepherd, the valley of the shadow of death was a location, a dangerous place. There really was and still is a valley of the shadow of death in the Holy Land. It is south of the Jericho Road, a very narrow gorge that cuts through the mountain range leading from Jerusalem to the Dead Sea. Yeah. Poor grazing conditions made it necessary for shepherds to quickly move their herds through this shadow of death. Uh, between towering mountains that blotted out the sun. Uh, unpredictable weather in the gorge uh, often made the journey uh, treacherous. Uh, there was nowhere to seek shelter uh, if the weather uh, suddenly uh, turned foul. Uh, and the worst part was uh, the valley is four and a half miles long. David expressed trust in the Lord, takes on a whole new meaning once you understand what he faced as a shepherd driving his herd. Uh, yea, uh, though I walk uh, through the valley uh, of the shadow uh, of death, uh, I will fear no uh, evil, uh, for thou art uh, with me. Uh, David isn't the only one who spoke of uh, the shadow uh, of death. Uh, it was a common uh, expression uh, among uh, the early Hebrew uh, nationals. Uh, the Hebrew word uh, is salma yeth. Uh, yeah, uh, it means uh, shade of death uh, or the grave. Uh, the Hebrews saw this dreaded death uh, as permanent uh, separation uh, from God. Uh, that's why uh, it's no wonder uh, Job thought uh, he was in uh, the shadow uh, of death. Uh, you know the story of Job, don't you? Uh, he lost his livestock uh, and his uh, livelihood, uh, his home uh, and uh, his family, uh, and finally uh, his uh, good health. Uh, in chapter 3, uh, verse 5, uh, Job says, uh, Let the day perish. When I uh, was uh, 
born. And he begs for the shadow of death to come and stain or swallow him in his agony. 14 times Job wails that he is in the shadow of death. As he wonders aloud before God how he ended up this way. When the Lord had enough of his belly aching. When the Lord had enough of his jaw yakking when the Lord had enough of his wailing he had to speak forcefully to Job just to get him to listen God said gird up thy loins like a man now, it's time for me uh, to question you uh, and let me see uh, if you uh, know the answers. Uh, in other words, uh, if I can just moralize it, uh, you claim to know uh, so much uh, about your condition. Uh, now it's my turn uh, to ask you uh, some questions uh, to see uh, just how wise uh, you are. Then the Lord gave Job uh, what my great grandmother would call uh, the what for? Yeah, yeah. You know what that is, don't you? It's when you get uh, or it's what you get uh, when you do nothing but complain non-stop about the condition that you're in because you know more about it than God. Job complained so much that God had to tell him to be still. I can hear the Lord as he says to Job, uh, have the gates of death uh, been opened uh, unto thee? Uh, or hast thou seen the doors uh, of the shadow uh, of death? Uh, let me give it to you in plain English. Uh, Job uh, has the location uh, of the gates of death uh, been revealed uh, to you? Uh, tell me uh, about it uh, if you know. In our lifetime, we faced our own shadows of death. And never more than during this worldwide pandemic. When trouble comes, we are all just like Job. Or like John Elroy Sanford. You know him as Red Fox. Uh, on Sanford and Son. Uh, when trouble comes, uh, we automatically think uh, this must be uh, the big one. Uh, and we turn to God uh, with the same question uh, Job had. Uh, why me? Well, let me see if I can give you three points and then we'll let you go home. Is that all right? Uh, first of all, uh, troubles uh, are only uh, shadows. Uh, turn around and look at your neighbor and say, troubles are only shadows. Uh, come on and put your hands together. And, uh, let those people out there know that you're in here. Uh, yeah, uh, they may seem monstrous uh, at the time because their presence weighs so heavily uh, upon us. Uh, trouble has a way uh, of getting us uh, to take our eyes uh, off the prize uh, of knowing Christ. Uh, Satan uses trouble uh, to create doubt in you while he tries to devour you. He'll try to use anxiety 
uh, to weaken your blessed uh, assurance. Uh, he'll try to use sickness uh, to convince you there is no balm in Gilead. Uh, he'll try to use hostility uh, to destroy uh, your peace. Uh, he'll try to use failure to convince you uh, that you'll never succeed. Uh, he'll try to use wickedness uh, against your desire for righteousness. Uh, and he'll try to use lies uh, to cause you to miss uh, your blessing. Uh, but David said, uh, I will uh, call uh, upon uh, the Lord uh, who is worthy uh, to uh, be praised. Uh, and so shall uh, I be saved uh, from uh, mine enemies. Uh, shadows uh, can be uh, frightening uh, no matter what shapes uh, they take. Uh, shadows uh, will control you uh, if you let them. Uh, Satan uh, is their chief uh, advocate. Uh, his plan uh, is to use the shadows uh, to deceive the saints uh, of God. Uh, deface uh, the image uh, of uh, God. Uh, discourage uh, the work uh, of uh, God. Uh, deride uh, the miracles uh, of uh, God. Uh, defeat uh, the plan uh, of uh, God. Uh, defy the wisdom uh, of God. Uh, and depress uh, the people of uh, But like David, uh, with faith, uh, we can overcome uh, our troubles. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, how deep the valley uh, or how high uh, the mountains. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, how rocky uh, the road uh, or how perilous uh, the crossings. Uh, these valleys uh, are only shadows uh, of our lives. Uh, nighttime experiences. If we hold on to the light of Christ, joy will come in the morning because Christ has overcome the world. I think I said something right there. Well, not only that, but then trials are teaching time. Look at your neighbor and say, trials are teaching time. Poor, faithful Job could not understand how his life could have gone so wrong so quickly. Theological scholars have tried for centuries to explain why Job had to suffer so much. And while it's true that God withdrew his hedge of protection from around Job. Yeah. The reality is that trials are a part of life. Look at your neighbors and say, trials are a part of life. Give the Lord a hand of praise right there. You see, Jesus attested that. He said in John 16 and 33, in the world ye will have tribulation. That's what tribulations are, y'all. Troubles. David uh, had his trials, uh, and not just in the valley uh, of the shadow uh, of death. Uh, King Saul uh, sought to kill him. Uh, David's own son, uh, Absalom, uh, led an army of haters uh, against him. Uh, and then there uh, were the shadows uh, 
David brought among on himself. Well, it's not the trial itself that's significant. It's what we learn in the midst of our trials that matters. God uses our trials to teach us lessons we would not otherwise learn. Five-time Grammy award-winning singer Larnell Harris explains it best for us while on a rigorous concert tour. He lost his voice. He had worked his vocal cords to the point of collapse. The doctor warned him that if he did not stay silent for a full year, he would lose his voice forever. Harris once said, I learned more about God's use of my voice in that long and painful year than in all the years I studied music at Western Kentucky University. Well, my brothers and my sisters, I stop by to let you know that God uses trials not just to test our faith, but to teach us how to overcome adversity. Job learned during his test how little we knew about God, but he also learned how great and powerful his sovereign God really was. And when the shadows disappeared, God was faithful to restore Job's life and livelihood. Well, lest I hold you too long, finally troubles lead us to our victories. Turn around and look at your neighbor and say, troubles lead us to our victories. Put your hands together and bless the Lord. Are you uh, at the end uh, of your rope? Uh, just tie a knot uh, and hold on. Uh, the Lord will fashion uh, a way out uh, for you. Uh, the old saints used to call it uh, a way uh, out of no way. Uh, yeah, if faith uh, is the evidence uh, of things uh, not seen. Uh, you will have to trust God uh, that when uh, the battle uh, is over, uh, he will uh, give you uh, the victory. Uh, Peter said, uh, wherefore, uh, let them uh, that suffer uh, according to the will of God uh, commit the keeping uh, of their souls to him uh, in uh, well-doing. Uh, as unto uh, a faithful uh, creator. Uh, well, uh, God uh, is uh, faithful uh, to uh, the uh, faithful. Uh, let me say that again. Uh, God uh, is uh, faithful uh, to uh, the uh, faithful. Uh, he will keep his covenant uh, with those who uh, follow him. Uh, your end, uh, yeah, you keep your end uh, of the covenant. Uh, you know uh, the if part. Uh, if uh, my people uh, who are called by my name uh, will humble uh, themselves uh, and pray uh, and seek my face uh, and turn from uh, their wicked ways, uh, you keep your part. Uh, God will keep his. He will heal your land. You've got to stand firm on the unshakable foundation of God.
God's uh, eternal word. Uh, if you do that, uh, you will survive uh, the darkest uh, of nights. Uh, you think you have troubles? Uh, you think this uh, is the big one? Uh, I'm afraid not. Uh, some are wondering uh, if this pandemic uh, is a sign uh, that Christ uh, is uh, coming again soon. Uh, but this pandemic uh, is just uh, the beginning uh, of uh, trouble. Uh, listen uh, to what Jesus said. Uh, and ye shall hear uh, of wars uh, and rumors of wars. Uh, see uh, that ye be uh, not troubled. Uh, for all these things uh, must come to pass. Uh, but the end uh, is uh, not yet. Uh, for nation uh, shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places all these are the beginning of sorrows but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved well, I'm taking a cue from David and Job, and I'm girding up my loins with truth, the truth that comes from God. I am an ambassador in bonds. I'm going to hold on and hold out until the end. Will you? Commit your way unto the Lord with me and trust in him. If you do, he will encourage you when shadows of despair come. He will strengthen you when shadows of weakness threaten. He will guide you when shadows of doubt loom. He will assure you when shadows of anxiety lurk, he will hold you close. When shadows of heartaches bring sorrow, the Lord will bring to pass the victories we are praying for. Our darkest of nights will be followed by the brightest of days. Our heaviest of burdens will Our greatest weakness will be followed by the most profound spiritual strength. Our most challenging circumstances will produce the most blessed results. Our taunting shadows are no match for God's glorious mercy. Our painful sorrows are no match for God's unspeakable joy. Our frustrating fears are no match for God's unsurpassable peace. If we walk with him through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. The Lord will take us from gutter to glorious, from miserable to marvelous, from night shadows of doubt and desperation unto the of our deliverer. I trust in God. I trust in God. I believe in God. I trust in the Lord. It's only a shadow. You don't have to be afraid. He walks with us. He talks with us. He tells us we are his own. to be afraid. You got to act like you got some faith. You got to believe that you have some faith. And watch God guide you and lead you. I 
they come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear calling in I want to go to heaven when I die. Then pray that prayer simple. It doesn't have to be any specific words. Something like, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner and I'm sorry for my sins. But I believe that Jesus paid the price for my sins when he died on the cross. And then he rose three days later like he said he would because you brought him back to life. And now I want to receive him into my heart. I want to live for you. And I want you to live in me. If you're willing to do that, if you believe that, get in a good church, Christian church. 
get baptized and start living the beautiful life the life that God has for you if you made that choice and that decision today give us a call at area code 408532 rock or send me a message at churchontherockbaptist.com let us pray for you and let us help you find a good Bible believing church wherever you are we believe that Jesus is the best thing that has ever happened to us. It's offering time here at Church on the Rock. Today is Legacy Project Sunday. Each member has been challenged to give $1,000 they've had since August and to do it. And so today you may want to bless Church on the Rock with a special gift to help us meet our goal. We're so close and yet if just a few people continue to do what they're supposed to do, we'll be over our goal. We've made it very easy for you to give to Church on the Rock through your financial apps on your Google Play and Android or iOS phones. Uh, the apps are Zelle Pay, Cash App, and PayPal. All you have to do is enter our telephone number, area code 408-532-7625 to make a generous donation to the church today. If you're on Facebook Live, at the top of the screen, there is an app button. You can press it. It'll take you straight to PayPal. You can give that way. We are also on the GiveLify app. Just search for Church on the Rock Baptist. Or you can go to our website at churchontherockbaptist.com. Hit the giving button and follow the instructions there. You may also mail your gift to Church on the Rock. Post Office Box 730-341, San Jose, California, 95173. Thank you in advance for what you're about to do. Thank you for helping us to continue this ministry here in the capital of Silicon Valley. We pray that it's been a blessing to you. For all of you that have sent prayer requests, please know that we are seeing them, and not just online, but every day in our prayer time. We're calling your name out to the Lord, asking him to bless you, to keep you, to strengthen you, and to help you with your need. Let's not forget whose birth it is that we celebrate this month. It is the birth of Jesus the Christ. And so I challenge you today, this week, tell that. We run and tell everything else, when the Niners or the Cowboys or, or the, the Seahawks are playing. But, but let's run and tell that Jesus Christ was born, but not only that he's born, but he's coming back again. Until next time, same place, same time. Join us and tell somebody about it. Go tell it on the mountain, over